I even stole money from my mom's purse. I can't spend money on you. Why can you not do the same to me? I thought people were equal. I have two mom because I have a stepmom, but I never know like why moms does that. I barely see my mom. Hey Kelly, welcome to the show. Hi, my name is Calpurnia. I'm 23 years old, just graduated from UCR in California, and I'm from China. I'm a international student currently in Riverside, PA. How did you find it their life in UCR and US in general? Well, I do not like the school, but here is amazing. The view and everything, the people you you won't see this view in China like too much air pollution and then the people there are mean i assume p- because of the air pollution i don't know they're just judgy about <laughs> so too much pressure okay okay it's going to be interesting because right off the bat i can see that you don't uh, like hold it back you tell it the way it is right <laughs> i know i so <laughs> I'm not going to fake it i like <laughs> that that's what you want uh, so what it was very interesting when you say that you came there for school and you like everything else except the school is that a fair summation of what you just said <laughs> yes um i did transfer to the school but i don't really like it but before this i went to other, another college i just wish i can transfer to you know UCLA USC UC Berkeley but i'm not that smart so what was your major there oh my major is acting like film oh. film acting pretty lame and that that's very interesting uh, because if you ask my experience uh, asian kids particularly those who have grown outside and who who are coming here to study i've seldom seen them picking up arts and similar like acting these kind of vocations generally they'll be very focused on science maths business those kind of degrees so i'll be very interested how did you decide like you came here to study a major and you picked up acting how did that happen were you always interested in that well um my first major is business my my mom is a business woman and um she mainly just tell me to like force me to um have the major of business but i felt a pretty bad exam like it's a midterm it's really easy everyone could do it everyone outside of this major can do it but i got 60 out of 100 and i showed this um you know that to my mom and said that you know what mom maybe i don't like this i don't even know what this is i i don't want to be like you you were mean i don't want to be mean because of business you know i but i think i didn't say that but at that time you know things are good money are good my mom is just like okay yeah do whatever after a year she regrets it but well i got regret too plus you have your own regrets things about my major they think actors like actress i would say like female actors they're more like prostitute in the industry that's what they think I, I who, who are they sorry i missed that what are you talking about people back in china or no like my mom you know? and my stepdad okay. and my um stepdad son they all think that actress in the industry is just like prostitute and mm. i i know i regret it now cuz it it doesn't pay good and you have to have a job and then find your gigs you know but i don't i don't hate that that i choose this major i hate it why they do not let me to do the things i want it's their perception mm-hmm. uh, clearly it's not right but that's how they look at it so that's regrettable however you say that you also regretted that they didn't let you do it but you did do your major so what else they did not they did not let you do well they don't want me to be like they don't want me to keep this career after i graduate right mm. they they think it, it doesn't make much money and won't be worth it to waste my time in this industry i see i see and and who does that because i heard you talking about your mother as well as stepmother so i am assuming that you have a stepmother as well as a mother right yeah and a stepdad and a birthdad okay okay and they all feel the same yeah 
then it must be more cultural because they're all back there back home and they all feel the same way so i think in some way i don't blame them too much because culturally i think they are they have been conditioned to think like that right and that's why i don't want to go back if i go back they want to control my life and i prefer to have a little bit of freedom <laughs> <laughs> okay as you come out of college do you have any income right now i'm currently just you know rely on gigs from backstage and i have a boyfriend who also can help me with um it's okay like right we live together he share a little bit of his i share a little bit of mine just not my money cuz i'm poor but he has a job and he say whatever i do he will support me which is good <laughs> it is it is good it is good uh-huh. but uh, at the same time it was pretty interesting how you listed your income as gigs boyfriend <laughs> right so that's that's quite interesting uh-huh. uh, yeah but uh, is that sufficient uh, or, or you are saying that uh, whatever is the difference between what you need to live and what you make from your gigs your boyfriend is able to make up the difference and that's how you are surviving today right how it is um because of the um so it's going to be a little bit different from uh, you know graduation cuz i'm international student you know people like international student when they come, go back to china the government takes their passport away i heard that happens a lot mm, so that they can't come back i know they can cuz the gum am i allowed to say that i heard <laughs> the things but yeah as long as you qualify with i heard right so it, it's just you heard right <laughs> yes not really happened to you're people. not letting out us you're not letting out a state secret that like you said that happened to you uh, tell me this uh, we spoke about your income which has not started and we'll we'll talk about what you plan to do in your life going forward but do you have a debt like how did you sponsor your studies did you take a debt or a loan or the family was able to foot the bill oh my mom pays all the tuition and that's going to be much more expensive than people who have citizenship which is not fair but she pays it thank god she did mm-hmm. yeah na- naturally uh, like you said you're out of state so you you'll be expensive but you're lucky that at least your mom could afford that uh, was it easy for her to relatively easy for her to pay that or did she have to make uh, financial sacrifices to for you to come here and um, get your major i think i i think she did make some sacrifice but she does not want me to know she does not want me to know anything but I don't know. I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Like I don't know nothing and then the family members they all blame me that I am the one who killed all oh, cuz my mom's her health is not well. Um heart attacks and a lot of, you know, business women um you drink too much beer and then you know you you always care about business and you didn't sleep much. Um my family member thinks I'm the one who's killing her. even my grandparents oh, wow. so it's super bad oh, wow. that must have been very stressful for a young girl like you hearing that kind of uh, mm-hmm. things um, so i'm sorry about that but uh, uh, <laughs> but but tell me a uh, little bit about your mom and your background like while growing up has she always been in business earning her own money or did, did it, it happen maybe after her divorce or something like was she forced to uh, become financially independent or was she always independent so my parents got divorced when i was born they've been constantly fighting when my mom's pregnant and pretty much when i when i went out they already divorced and my dad did not even want me birth dad did not even want me so my mom have to pay everything and make money she even She have to make money so she have no time to take care of me so she have to pay my birth dad to take care of me which is pretty wow. <laughs> pretty bad yeah mm-hmm. so she kind of have no choice i feel sorry okay. for her a lot absolutely no sure but uh, but did she have the skills to at least start earning money at that point or like how was her journey uh, the reason i'm asking is because that 
is your background that's how you have seen her uh, sort of getting into an earning money and either struggle for money or struggle to take care of her child and and also earn money mm-hmm. so I, i'm just trying to understand did she have a job did that come easy or that did she have to really fight her way uh, to establish her business and earn decent money so after she graduated her um college um she just went to outside of her city and went to not a big city but like city that makes um i don't know money um in a really early age um and she basically tell me that she did not um take any money after she's got 18 and she basically just earned everything she, like you know she she gets everything she earned and she's really good at business she been done a lot of business and she owns um um uh, how should I say companies and then she owns factories like that yeah that's very interesting and she is clearly a strong woman who has built all that on her own she, uh, so you had good uh, role model i would say from that perspective at least financially growing up tell me how that shaped your own thinking looking at your mother uh, sort of doing all this and financially at least taking care of her family which is you and maybe others right uh, how did that shape your own thinking around money and uh, how you want to live your life well of course that it makes me feel that money is not easy to earn that's what she been told me all the time like we're poor like try not to spend a lot of money um don't spend money on the things that is not that are not you know necessary and um try not to compare with other and don't be envy if they're you know the other kids get in school gets a new dress or something um i never really got a chance to have a lot of good stuff when i grew up um but i don't how should i say i don't blend this because i know things being hard for my mom but i do mm-hmm. not want to be like her when i grow up like i've seen her become really if i can say the word be about business like she will be call other person and then literally um you know shitting about the other person and she lends money to others did not even expect them to get back because they're family members jeez my you know my family members are a lot of them are really really terrible they did not even care about my mom but when my mom got money they wanted the money you know they want even like a share of it and my mom thinks yeah their life is tough i'll give some give them some money i don't want to become like that but i will be really careful with my money even though it's a really bad thing if you parent like if you trying to do the parenting to your kids and tell them to lower the cost of their you know they will be really bad cuz right now and by the time i grow up every time i see something on discount I think that's worth it because it's on discount because it's cheaper. That's that is no, that is terrible. That's bad because I spent a lot of money on things I don't even need. But their discount, I have to have them. That's bad. I would say that's, that, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. So you're saying that scarcity mindset that parents try to instill in their uh, kids at times it backfires like how you're saying. Uh, when you start looking at everything from just that one lens that if something is cheaper or on discount uh, then you have to have it or then you are doing the right thing poverty does change a person and it will destroy mm-hmm. you like your mind your you know your thought about your like value about money and everything it will it will change you completely and because and it was just not because of one big rupsy we've been through a couple that's why so your mom and you as a family you have seen bankruptcies growing up yes tell me then what was your takeaway did you decide that you don't want to be poor and you'll put special attention 
towards that or you decided that money is not something that I want to care about. It, it brings too much pain. So I don't want to talk and think about it. Which of the two options you choose? Well, money is definitely important. I would say it's way important than a lot of things in the world because it will change a person. It will destroy a person. It will help a person. And sometimes people say money does not, you cannot buy, use money to buy happiness, but you can. You just don't have, you know, you, you need to use, find some trick and then you use money, you know, like that. It's, it's going to be a lot of story, but definitely I think it's important. So when, when we've been through bankruptcy, I will make some money. When Even if I'm a student in China at the time, like junior high, I will buy really cheap bread, like uh, like $1 in my currency, like just one. And then for a pack, mm -hmm. I will buy like 20 or something and I will sell it to my classmate for like 2 or $3 for a pack. And I got, I got my punishment. <laughs> I got my punishment. Oh. Got you got punishment from mom or from school Both. authorities? But I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. You know what? And that is also a culture because frankly, here in US, that kind of behavior is encouraged. You are being enter enterprising if you are able to do something like that, like buy something low and find people who will pay you for it even if they are your classmates or they're your neighbors or anybody right here it is encouraged and but i can relate to it like in asian culture is and all it, it is looked down upon where a child is trying to make money right it's failure of the parent and maybe the child is doing something which she should not be doing she should be focusing on studying and that also is something which uh, needs to change frankly because here that's why kids grow up uh, much more confident about their abilities to be an entrepreneur, to be a businessman, to go out, talk to people and able to make money because that's a valuable skill that you were trying to learn, but you got punished for it. So somehow in your little mind, it will be instilled that this may not be the right thing to do, which is dangerous yeah. actually. And I was young. I do not know what's wrong or what's, I even, you know, I even stole money from my mom's purse when I was a kid, you know, like, elementary school then I stopped because I, I I thought it was bad and I thought it was also bad to sell the breast to you know my classmate because they all punish me for that and I do not know what's better like because they teach me like how you said it if you're a kid you only have to study that's your own job you cannot do anything else if you if you want to do anything else that means you hate study that's how they think. And I think that's pretty wrong. I mean, I definitely shouldn't steal, but what would be wrong if I made a little bit of money? Yeah, like I said, you're learning a valuable mm -hmm. skill. And you said another thing very powerful that because both of your acts got pretty similar reaction from people in position of authority, like parents or teachers, like you act of you stealing from your mom's purse and the act your other act where you were trying to make some money in a legitimate way by buying something low and selling it at the right price that a buyer was willing to pay. You got similar reaction, right? So your little mind can't really tell. Maybe you equated being that enterprising, being a small businesswoman also as something being as equally wrong as stealing, right? But when I steal the money, I, I just wanted to make friends. I thought if I have money, I can, you know, buy snacks they will be my friends i was in elementary school i'm stupid i know i shouldn't done that even sometimes i still do it now that's why i have to make levels for two people hmm. what did you say that's what oh, that's you have why to do i have what? to make levels for people so i don't have to you know. <laughs> that's interesting making levels for people tell me about that so how would you determine a level of a person if, if you have a friend you meet somebody new uh, how do I'm very curious to know how would you assign levels to them? I would just say like by the first time I see them by their first impression if they you know respect me if they um, they're funny like I like talking to them I like interact with them they start with a pretty high level but mm -hmm. people like when you meet them the first time it should be the, like the best one because by the time you know them 
there are bad things coming out. Also, your bad things coming out, and people will be like enemies instead of friends. And that's when you things happen. And by one thing happen, you 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 let the squirrel went down, and then it gets down and down and down, and you just don't want to be friends with them anymore. That's just my pattern. Okay, and, and that's very interesting. And subconsciously, I think we all do it, right? When we deal with people, in some way, we all do it subconsciously. Without, we may not be assigning levels, but you're right. Like we meet somebody, and either we feel more comfortable with them or less, right? Depending upon how we interact, uh, right, or how they、mm-hmm. interact with us. But what is interesting is,、uh, or what I want to know is, how do these levels come into play when you have any financial Transactions with those people, right? Do these levels influence how financially you interact with those individuals? It will change if I feel like they're too selfish to me. Cause、um, mm-hmm. it's okay if we went out for once. Like I can pay, and you can pay the next time. I don't really want to, you know, go Dutch and stuff like that.、Um, I. Me, I have a pretty good friend, and we kind of just you pay this mail, I pay the another one. We always hang out. That's okay. But for the other girl, I'll be like, okay, let's go Dutch because she just gave me a feeling of that she does not want me. She does not want to spend more money on me, which I find is sad because I can spend money on you. Why can you not do the same to me? I thought people were equal. How do you see your life going forward? Like, what kind of jobs、uh, you can actually get, and what kind of money you can start making anytime right. soon? Right. So for right now, because、um, I think I mentioned it before, I can only do jobs that、um, related to my major, since I'm an international student, and、mm-hmm. um, that's how the government works, right? So I have two gigs,、um, but right now SAG are on strike, so I cannot do a lot of. Gigs. I can only do student film or indie movie, which wouldn't get me anywhere, because agency they do not even they, if they see a real like demon real they do not want to see a student film or they do not want to see monologues. Although I only have monologue, they want to see like really like put in production like professional, and that didn't get me anywhere because. How I'm just starting, and you are asking this much. How can I get a job? It's okay. I can always do gigs. Um, I like it. If I have time, I can do gigs. It's okay. It just pays so little. That's why they're on strike. That's why, you know, I'm Asian. I'm not even white, and I do not. I'm not a guy. I'm just a girl. I don't have that much of things that people wanted on me. So it's really hard for me to find a job and. Of course, my income is low, but I'm only starting. It's okay. You ex- expect your mom to help, but what does she expect out of you? Like, is she、uh, upset about the situation you are in? Is she coping well? Oh, she wanted me to go back to China and work for her. Either work for her or take the job that she offers to me. Even as she wanted me to be a teacher to teach acting. I don't even know what I learned, and she wanted me to go to do a <laughs> master degree for acting. Waste of money, I would say. But、um, if I want to be here, she 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 is cut me off financially. Like she says, she can buy me clothes I want, skincare I want. She never say that, but now right now she says it.、Um, but food. Um, rent, utility, everything, phone bill. She won't pay for me anymore. Like she can give me if I want. I need new skincare. She will pay for it. If I need 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 new clothes, she will pay for it. That like that, but just like once a month. I I don't know. I don't get、mm-hmm. that woman. I really don't. Like I feel like I never have. <laughs> I feel like I have two mom because I have a step mom, but I never know like why mom does that. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, I think、uh, from with parents, and then just I don't know your specific situation, but in general with parents, they always have this conflicting mindset, 
that at times they want to be tough on you because they want you to learn things. At times they let their emotions get better of themselves. So they will either give you something or agree to something. And that's why you see those two different personalities and you are not able to figure out what is yeah, she really. It all depends on her mood. How would I know? I'm not your puppet. Why do I need to, you know, take everything like based on your mood? That's so. <laughs> That's so sad. Okay. So, uh, uh, Kelly, uh, let's quickly talk about a few more things in, in mm -hmm. sense of you did tell me about your uh, habit where you go ahead and buy things on discount, whether you need them or not. So that's something which is a problem. Anything else in terms of money, like uh, in terms of eating out or anything else which you think uh, you need to control your habit and reduce your expenses? So a um, few years ago, I've been to like different patterns about this bad habit. A few years ago, I buy a lot of cos uh, cosmic products, like cosmetic products, like lipstick, um, mm -hmm. foundation. Eyeshadow palette. I have a ton. I have a whole room that can fill by all cosmetic products. That's why it well makes me feel safe. I don't even know why. I, I don't. I never get it. Some of them, a lot of them, I would say half of them, I barely even touch, but I spend my allowance on it. Sometimes I don't even have money to eat, and I choose to buy that other than food. Cosmetics. And after that few years, and I've been fighting with my mom too because she hated it. And I was like, How, well, I want to do this, but no. Nah. Right now, I hated it. Um, this uh, this few years for me is that I keep buying food. I can't even, I can't even, you know, food that I'm wasting. I, I buy tons of food because, you know, they're cheap or like, um, they're there. I never saw it um, or something. I just buy it and I did not even think about if I'm gonna eat it or not and In the end, I'll just toss them into a garbage can, which is pretty bad habit guys You, you have to My mom keep telling me to write everything every time I spend my money She tell me to write it down. So I know I never done it still I did not do it, but right now what I can do is also, thanks to my boyfriend, every time I went shopping, he asked me, did you really need this? Then I'll think about it twice. I was like, yeah, probably I don't need this. That's how it changes for me now. Otherwise, I would just be wasting money for the rest of my life. Mm. So what kind of food is that? Like, is it uh, prepared? Is it grocery or is it prepared food from restaurants? Both. And all? Like, um... I would, um, um, how should I say this? I would buy snacks from, from the market, snacks, grocery, uh, mostly snacks and drinks. And um, sometimes grocery. Recently, I've been crazy about fruit. I buy tons of food, but like fruit, but I, because it's so hot and a lot of them get bad quickly and I regret it. Now I'm just trying not to spend a penny if, if we still have food. That's just... Yeah. So cosmetic and food are those, uh, like earlier it was cosmetic. You think now it's food where you spend a lot yeah, of your money Yeah, that's what on. makes me feel safe. Like if I care. go back home and I see a refrigerator food of food, I'll be, I'll be, I don't know. Like I'll be feel safe, fulfilled or something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm told. Mm -hmm. Okay. So some of it is psychological that you need to work on, but a tactical way of controlling those kind of urges is to actually do the budgeting similar to what your mom was saying but instead of writing what you spend your money on you plan and budget for it beforehand right so you say that i'm going to spend say hundred dollars a week if it's two of you or whatever right on food and groceries so you write it down and then when you go out that's your budget that's the maximum you can spend on food right so that that will make sure that you stay within the budget. You allocate budget beforehand and then you go out and buy rather than buy and then write it down because by that time it's too late anyway. You can go back and study, but it's too mm -hmm. late anyway. So budgeting is something that can really help in controlling some of those impulsive buys. Yeah. 
anything financially anything else that sort of bothers you i used um if i have a job as you know any kind of work if i have a job if i earn money i would spend the money like i wouldn't think about it cuz um i feel like it's my money it's not my mom's money so i can spend however i want so i won't even make budget to spend the money i earn i i've been to a pass a phase of that which i find pretty weird i don't even know why but thank god right now i don't make money any money Yeah. <laughs> so that's an interesting way to put it thank god i don't make any money <laughs> i i seldom hear anybody say that however <laughs> i understand in what context you're saying this uh, but this is also very interesting kelly because i have seen the reverse happen when kids have money from parents they spend that money easily and when they start making their own money they see how hard it is to make money and they are much more careful disciplined around money but you say that it's the yes. other way for you you have a struggle with mom at least mom keeps some sort of leash on you and she keeps a watch she discusses with you what you are spending your money on or why do you need more money so you are little bit more careful around that but if it's your own money which you have earned i have my rights uh, you spend yeah. them yeah but is it because like has that come easy to you like don't you work hard for those gigs that get you yeah. that money so shouldn't you be valuing this my money? money and i can spend however no sure yeah i i found that is different <laughs> for others i don't know it's because every time i ask my mom for money it's really hard she treats me not like a daughter at that time she treats me like okay you want my investment you got to act like it you're going to write stuff like what you need me in uh, invest that's how she treats me like a boss like a, not like a boss but like you know like i'm trying to make business with her like oh please uh, give me your investment i really need this money is hard but when i make my own money is tired but it's my own money like there's no budget there's i have my own rights they're all mine i feel the power i know it's bad now i realize it's pretty bad but yeah and i think it is influenced by that behavior that what happens with your mom it's clearly influenced mm -hmm. by that but at the same time if you are money making money it's your money uh, going forward remind yourself how difficult it was for you to earn this money still spend it for things that you want and you will be making all the calls about that money you are right in that but do ensure that you don't splurge it don't spend it on things that you really don't need you are doing it just because you can right but going back to your mom it's interesting so if it's an investment for her has she hinted or openly spoken about what she expects the what kind of return she expects on the investment <laughs> does she expect you to do well or does she expect something back from you in terms of money um well um she's the one that sent me here and every time i have struggle um, in my life cuz i'm the only one here and i've been through you know a lot of things here like car accident a lot of things but my mom was always there and every time i complain about my personal life here my mom be like oh don't say that you have to earn money you know that right you have to uh, earn money so me and my birth dad and my stepdad they won't be starved like <laughs> like my mom always have the pressure on me like we give you the money you know that we're going to want it back you're going to make money like no matter how hard life is you're going to earn money so i i think she expect something back other chinese parents other parents in her position do they all expect their kids to kind of bring money and take care of them or is your mom unique From what in that? i know no like you know my um i barely see my mom especially after like junior high cuz in high school i have to leave in high school i literally i have to leave in the school i can only go back doing week uh, weekends and you know their parents will pick them up on friday my mom never shows up she's busy um they always call their parents when they're in the dorm in school i call my mom once cuz i saw them call their mom every day 
I called my mom once and my mom said, she's busy. She's in a meeting. So you know what to do. I was like, okay, I'll hang up. Uh, I don't, I don't complain, but I don't even have a right to for my mom. Because if I complain, my life is hard. My mom will be like, you were telling me your life is hard. Do you know how hard it is to make money? So I won't, but for all the other kids, they can just, you know, um, <clears throat> they can just um, fake cry to their parents, be like, mom, have a ter- I'm having a terrible time. I need more money for this bag or something. They can just do that. It happens all the time around me. And I never done it. I don't have the nerve. I don't have, you know, I don't have anything. I don't have the gut to even ask my mom for that. My mom did, did not even reply my message. I don't think she's like other parents. I'm sure there are other parents like her in China because there are a lot of people just from me, from all the people that surround me. No, she is going to be the special one. But I don't blame her. I don't blame her. <laughs> is there a pressure on you that you somewhere you actually want to meet that expectation, even though you may or may not agree that this is, that's a fair expectation from a kid? But... Do you really want to try and meet that expectation? Is that pressure on you? Of course. And um, it makes me like, I have bipolar and I don't have it before, but you know, things happen. Um, and then there's a cup during, during COVID, there's a part of time. My mom think like, I, I know that I'm going to be really honest with my mom about like my mental health and everything. My mom freaked out. And wanted me to go back and say she's sorry about everything. You don't have to, you know, um, make money, all that. And I went back to tell her I'm okay. Also take a gap year. My mom completely changed. She will be like, I forgot what I said in the phone. Like, you have to do everything I said. I, I can't change the fact that I will always listen to what she said. So pretty much, you know, she, she changed by her mood. So I have to change it too, because she's, she's been through a lot for me, for my tuition. I'm not sure if there's, there's love, but there's money and I own her the money. Um, if she expects me to give the money back, I'll try let my, re- my heart like really bad. If say, she say no, then I'll take the advantage. I'll like, okay, I'll go away. I have my own life. Bye mom. See you next 20 years. Okay. You feel morally obligated that if she really expects it, then you should work on getting it's it back. It's like, yeah. Okay. It's like. That's probably yeah. the noble thing to do. I can't change it. It's my own mom. Right? <laughs> we all have family. And frankly, Kelly, uh, uh, if you dig deeper, you'll find that everyone has that story. Uh, family comes with its own quirks, right? And they come as a package. <laughs> so you have done well to highlight that there is both positive and negative. You spoke about how bravely she has brought you up alone, supported you financially all through. So there are certain positive aspects. Uh, But yeah, of course, there are other uh, aspects as well, which put a lot of mental pressure on you, right? So unfortunately, you can't change your family. They are who they are. We need to navigate life around that. Um, Thank you for talking to me. I really hope that you uh, find your way in life. And I think that starts with being focused on building your career the way you want and which is also financially rewarding because that will help you establish yourself in this country which you clearly want to. And that hopefully it will also allow you to take care of your family back home in China, right? And that I think will be mentally good for you if you are able to do that. You will feel relieved and you'll feel like you paid a debt back right so it was interesting how you said you may not have a monetary debt but you do have an emotional debt which eventually you have to pay back (laughs) so i wish uh, that you are able to find uh, way your way in life and and get over all of this thank you okay Uh, thank you again for talking to me wish you all the best